Welcome to Healthitarian Living. In this video episode, I will be sharing with you another Healthitarian meal template, this one for green smoothies. And green smoothies are something that I've been personally enjoying for over 10 years now, and also teaching about the benefits of green smoothies for years when it comes to not just their nutrition and health benefits, but even practical benefits as well. As part of this video, I will first explain to you why green smoothies in as much of a summary as possible. Then I will take you through the five step template to use to make numerous combinations of amazing, delicious, and optimally healthy green smoothies. And finally, we will finish this video episode off with a demo of me making one particular green smoothie combination. Well, for starters, they are one of the fastest, easiest, and most nutrient dense meals possible. Really, the only thing better than making a green smoothie is eating the ingredients you would use to make that green smoothie as they are without actually blending them. Otherwise, you just have to place the green smoothie ingredients into a blender and then consume it as you desire. My approach to green smoothies is also 100% whole food and plant-based. This means that healthitarian green smoothies do not include any isolates or extracts. That means no oils of any kind or any type of protein powders. They provide an outstanding balance of wholesome healthy carbohydrates, which make up most of their calories, as well as a good balance and proportion of healthy plant proteins as well as healthy fats. They are a super rich source of vitamins and minerals. And when it comes to minerals, specifically minerals that many people are concerned about getting enough in their diet, like calcium, magnesium, potassium, and iron. They are also a super rich source of healing and protective antioxidants and phytonutrients. On a practical level, they help you eat your leafy greens, which are the most nutrient dense foods which should be part of our diet every single day, several times a day in fact, but which most people do not get enough of and often have a hard time eating. And so as part of green smoothies, you can enjoy at least one if not several servings of leafy greens in a very pleasant and actually very delicious format. They also provide you with several servings of fruits and vegetables within one meal. And if you, like myself, use these as a breakfast meal, that means within your very first meal of the day, you've already checked off several servings of fruits and vegetables. They also help you eat omega-3 rich seeds, specifically flax seeds and chia seeds, which are very tiny and often very hard to eat or not quite ideal in other forms or meals. Finally, green smoothies feature so many health benefits for us. They are highly alkalizing. They are highly anti-inflammatory. They are highly cleansing and detoxifying. And they are highly beneficial for weight loss as well as healthy weight maintenance. And of course, being rich in greens, leafy greens and chlorophyll, they are also outstanding to optimize our energy levels. And last but not least, green smoothies are ideal for any life stage. They are perfect for kids and they are great for any stage of our adult years right into our elderly years, at which time sometimes chewing or digestion may become more difficult and an easier to digest food meal idea like a green smoothie as well as a quick and easy meal idea can actually be the best source of high quality nutrients and healthy foods. For step one of the green smoothie template, pick a leafy green and rotate them through regularly. And you really just need one leafy green. Yes, you can pick more than one, but really, as I'll be sharing with you throughout this entire template video, and as is my general approach to teaching about health and nutrition, keeping it simple is best. It is much better and optimal for our digestion, and it also makes your life easier and less complicated. Of course, if you are using wild edibles, going picking in the spring or summer from a safe and clean place, or if you are using the prepared green mixes, especially usually store sell them as baby mixes of all kinds, then of course you can just throw in what you have available. The best leafy green options for green smoothies include kale, spinach, and collard greens. Other good options are bok choy, pak choy, and any outer green cabbage leaves. If you do have access to wild greens, you can also use ones like dandelions, plantain, or curly dock. And for more tips, if you are harvesting wild greens, see my wild green smoothie video. 
The greens you would typically not want to use as part of your green smoothie are any lettuce greens. Save those for your wholemeal salads. Typically, they go better as part of salads, and they do tend to change the smoothie flavor in more unpleasant ways as opposed to the greens that I mentioned, which actually get masked quite well if you have the right combination of fruits. Now, the other greens that you may not wish to use are greens like arugula or rapini. Both of these have very strong and sharp flavors, and unless you're a big fan of either one, you don't want those actually coming out in your green smoothie. The amount that you would use will depend more or less on the type of leafy green you are using. If you are using big leaves of kale or collards, one leaf alone, especially the big huge collards, may be all you need for your green smoothie serving. Typically though, we would measure it as part of a handful. So if you're using spinach or small dandelion leaves, a handful to two handfuls is a good serving for a green smoothie. And the more you get advanced in consuming green smoothies, the more handfuls you can add of leafy greens. Make sure that any leaves you use are clean and washed. And it is always best to work with fresh leaves as much as possible, seasonal and local, even better, and of course, organic. However, certain leafy greens freeze very well, such as kale. For more tips on how to do that, see my how to freeze kale video. Step two, pick one to two fruits. Just like with leafy greens, yes, you can go for more, but as I shared with you previously, the simpler, the better. Bananas and leafy greens alone make exceptionally delicious and great smoothies. Bananas in general actually are one of the key ingredients for making very creamy and delicious smoothies, but if you don't enjoy bananas, I would still say give the green smoothie a try with the banana because the banana flavor gets mixed around with the other ingredients in a way that diminishes banana flavor specifically, but brings out a nice subtly sweet and fruity flavor experience. If of course you can't eat bananas for any reason like allergies, then the next best fruit to base your smoothies on would be mangoes as they also have a nice creamy and richer type of consistency and flavor. Other best fruits to use include pineapples, oranges, strawberries, blueberries, peaches, and red grapes. Other potential fruits would be apples, pears, plums, apricots, and papayas. When it comes to raspberries, blackberries, or pomegranates, these may not be ideal choices for everyone, depending on the type of blender especially that you have, as really regardless of the type of blender, you're going to get some grittiness as part of your smoothie texture. The only fruits you don't want to be using for your green smoothies are melons. This includes anything like watermelon, cantaloupe, or honeydew. And they're not ideal for several reasons. Part of optimal food combining, these fruits, or specifically this group of fruits, should only be eaten ideally on their own and not mixed with any other fruits or foods. Whereas the other fruits that I talked about, generally speaking, will pair fine, especially if your digestive system is okay, with leafy greens or as part of a green smoothie. The other reason is that melons in general don't actually bring out the best in green smoothies. So enjoy their beautiful flavors and refreshing watery and juicy nature on their own, but keep them out of green smoothies. To use fruits for a green smoothie, you can pick from fresh or frozen. Of course, as much as possible, try going again fresh, local, organic, and seasonal. But when that's not possible, you can also rely on frozen fruits. Now, to not make the smoothie too cold, as room temperature or just slightly chilled is best for, again, our digestive system, try to use one frozen fruit if you have to and one fresh fruit. If you are not going to be using any frozen fruits and you like to or must for any reason have a chilled smoothie, slightly chilled that is, then do feel free to use perhaps a couple of ice cubes. Also, when it comes to green smoothies, there's no need for any dry fruits. The fresher frozen fruits that you're going to be using are already going to make your smoothie super delicious. And so there's really no need to add the concentrated sweetness of dried fruits. Keep those again, for a different time. When it comes to the specific amounts of the fruits that you would use, typically think of one whole fruit, whether that's a smaller or a larger fruit of its kind, or about half a cup to one cup of the fruit, if it's something like berries. One last thing to note about fruits is that they will specifically determine the color of your green smoothie. So even though I generally speak of them all as green smoothies, there are some green smoothies that aren't actually going to be green in color. Yellow or orange fruits make green colored smoothies. Blue or dark blue fruits make more of a purplish green smoothie. Any red fruits, they will make more of an olive colored green smoothie. Step three, pick a seed 
and or a nut. Ideally, you want to use omega-3 rich seeds as your main ingredient choice here. This means flax seeds, chia seeds, or hemp seeds. Do note that hemp seeds will change the flavor of your green smoothie. Some people like it, some people don't, so do experiment and are not as ideal in their omega-3 to omega-6 ratio as the other two choices. So I always recommend sticking to flax or chia for your green smoothies. If you have a powerful blender, then use them in their whole form. Otherwise, if you don't, then simply use them or buy them in their ground forms. What about other seeds? Technically, yes, you can use other seeds, but I don't recommend it. Sunflower seeds are high in omega-6, which most people are getting too much of anyway. Pumpkin seeds can cause an unpleasant smoothie flavor. Sesame seeds can also distort the flavor and are best made into a tahini-like savory spread or sauce. Nuts can also be used either in addition to the seeds or in place of the seeds. That will depend most on your metabolic and lifestyle needs. By adding nuts, you can add more calories or nutrients or creaminess to your smoothie. And so when using nuts, be sure that you are using them in their raw forms and soaked as much as possible. The best nut options to include as part of green smoothies are raw almonds or raw cashews. You can also substitute here an avocado. If you want to bulk up your smoothie, calories, nutrients, or creaminess, then use an avocado. In terms of your nut and seed amounts, you want to aim for a quarter cup as a serving, or a small handful, or about two tablespoons. I recommend starting with a quarter of the avocado and working your way up to see what works for you, as it is very easy to ruin a green smoothie with too much avocado. Step four, pick a boost. Now this step is completely optional. Most green smoothies do not require any boosts as they are already well balanced nutritionally and offer such an amazing nutrient density. However, sometimes you may need to or want to add a certain boost to your green smoothie. These would be whole food forms of medicinal or specialty plant foods, simply dried and powdered. Common examples of potential boosts include maca, ashwagandha, trifala, shatavari, spirulina, chlorella, or raw cacao for a chocolatey smoothie. Each one will have its own specific amount, whether you are using it for health maintenance or as part of a certain healing protocol. Do use them wisely, as more is not better. And I have seen over the years so many people make these elaborate smoothies of 15 different ingredients, which first costs you so much money, complicates the heck out of the smoothie, and in the end, does not end up tasting well at or good at all. And so keep it simple. Focus on one boost at a time if you feel you need it and when or what you would most benefit from at the time. For example, use the adaptogen ashwagandha in your smoothies during times of extra physical, mental, or emotional stress. Or use maca to help balance your hormones. Step five, add your water. For various reasons, many people are conditioned to believe that to make a smoothie, you would need either non-dairy milk or coconut water, or worse yet, juice of some kind. And none of these are actually ideal choices to include as part of an optimally healthy whole food plant-based smoothie. Commercial non-dairy milk is a processed food that is watered down and includes various undesirable ingredients like oils, sweeteners, flavors, and other additives. There's really no need or good reason to be putting the commercial non-dairy milks and wasting your health and money into your green smoothies. So if you want more nutritionally or calorically than the green smoothie will already provide, then work with step three in a wise way, your nuts and seeds. When it comes to coconut water, that's lovely, but if you actually live in the tropics, Otherwise, it is a processed food product that comes in undesirable packaging with a steep price tag. So it is also completely unnecessary in this case, as your smoothie is already packed with amazing electrolytes and nutrient density. And when it comes to juice, that's just a given big no-no. If you're making homemade real juices for the purpose of cleansing or detoxification or as a snack, juicing your own fruits and vegetables, that's fine. Use them at that time for that purpose. But as part of green smoothies, you're already using the right ingredients in your leafy greens and fruits. Use them in their whole form and do not water them down with any type of juice. This is why the ideal liquid for an optimally healthy green smoothie is high quality water. How much you use will depend on how runny or viscous, namely thick, you'd like your smoothie. Typically about half a cup to one cup of water is ideal. So those are the five easy steps of our wholemeal green smoothie template. 
Now to make a green smoothie, yes, you will need a blender. That is one of the given kitchen appliances that you must have. And the type or quality of your blender will highly dictate the texture of your green smoothie. If we are working with a very low powered or low quality blender, you're going to get various pieces or chunks of the ingredients that you use. Some people don't mind that, that's just fine. They like to chew their smoothies, which is actually the ideal way to uh, consume them anyways. But if you do mind, then this is where you're going to need to invest in a good blender. Ideally a Vitamix, which is a high powered blender, but they do range from about three to $600. However, you can easily go down to the Nutri Bullet Pro or the Nutri Ninja Pro, which will cost you about $100 or less. And will do a pretty nice job pulverizing most ingredients down to a pleasant enough palatable texture. Other than that, a green smoothie should take you about five minutes. Basically, you just need to wash any ingredients that need to be washed and place them into your blender. Press that button and that's all it takes. So let's get started. As part of step one, we are to choose a leafy green. I'll be using bok choy. The only thing I recommend you doing is for something like bok choy, actually remove the stem. Now, there's nothing wrong with using the stem. By all means, you can do it, even more nutritional benefits. But this is the part that will change the green smoothie to be a little bit sharper in flavor. And the same thing goes for greens like kale or collard greens. As part of step two, we are to pick one to two fruits. And we'll be using one banana. And we'll also be using some frozen mango. Finally, as our ideal seed or nut, as part of step three, we'll be using flax seeds. And as part of step five, we're going to be using high quality water. When you are placing the ingredients into your blender, if it's a regular blender, start by layering your fruits in first. And if it's a personal blender, where you flip the cup upside down, then the leafy greens go in first and the fruit should be last. And here is our beautiful green smoothie that is of a beautiful, easy to drink consistency. And they are best consumed fresh. But of course, given different lifestyle needs, you may need to pack them for later or take them on the go with you, which is fine as well. Just keep them in a sealed container. If you need to store them for more than a few hours, then in a sealed container, refrigerated is best for up to or about 24 hours. A typical green smoothie for one person will be about three to 400 calories. You can consume green smoothies on their own as a meal if you prefer something a little lighter or you can pair them with some other whole plant food that you would enjoy. For example, you can use green smoothies to make a smoothie bowl. If you use less water and make them thicker, then they can also serve as yogurt-like or pudding-like meal ideas. And typically I would say aim for about two cups or 500 mils or 16 ounces and that would be a normal serving to have. So hopefully as you practice with more combinations and find what works best for you, your favorite ones, you're going to get hooked on how delicious they are and how rejuvenating they make you feel. If you would like more in-depth information about green smoothies, explanations about their nutritional and health benefits, as well as combinations of different flavors, etc., then you can also check out my Essentials of Green Smoothies video course on udemy.com. Thanks for watching this video and see you in another one. Enjoy.